two minutes late. That's pretty All good right. for us. Um, so it's the last week of April. Mm -hmm. So it's our last installment of our uh, spring out of your spring out of your comfort zone. What makes you nervous? And um, so today we're gonna play with some interesting materials that and sometimes make people nervous. Yep. And we're gonna do another bag because Jen does bags or two or two. Um. Anyway, so the materials we're gonna play with today are number one, cork. If you've never played with cork, I understand. Um, <laughs> it's it's it? very cool. It has a great look. It is kind of expensive. I forget how much it is a yard. Like $35 a yard. Yeah, but usually you end up using little, little bits, bits of it, it, not big chunks of it. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to play with the cork. And that's actually a cotton linen blend. Right. These, uh, this is a print from Quarry Trail, um, which is really cool. It's an Essex linen cotton blend, but it's they've printed on it. It's woven and then printed. So it's really a cool fabric, which is a lot of and fun. We bought it intending to make bags with it and, and haven't yet. Haven't done it. So we're going to do it. Awesome. And so we're going to make a linen and cork bag. We like cork as the base mm -hmm. of a bag. Jen did these uh, tote bags with her leftover panels from um, Songbook. Songbook, which by the way, ships in June. Yes, we're getting it. It was supposed to be May. Now yes, there's pre-orders available for one of the kits. Anyway, but she went ahead and made this bag and she put cork on the bottom. Cork is great on the bottom because first of all, it's going to get less dirty. Right. And it's going to wear a little bit better than Your cotton. And so cork is great on the bottom of the bag. Right. Or as a bag. And or as a see, wallet. I cut out some cork to make this and then I have this like piece left over and you know. You can't waste $35 can't just a yard let it cork. sit there and I had a little lacy zipper at home so she i had to make a boxy bag with a little tula tab and it's adorable so our plan today is to show you how to make a tote bag with cork and linen yep and um we might we might a, make one of these another too. one of those while we're at it uh we got our supplies on the way here this morning so we're gonna go beginning to end yep right it'll be fun okay so what you're gonna do Generally speaking, for these bags, I like to have a half yard of each fabric. So this is going to be our main exterior fabric. But this um, is a directional print. Right. You guys. Ideally, my half yard would go this way. It doesn't here, but that's fine because I'm using a cork base. So the pieces I need out of here are going to be 17 and a half inches wide and 18 inches tall. Oh, you're or I like 18 inches wide. Yeah. And 17 and a half inches tall. That's what she said. That's what I said. I'm so I'm going to have her do some cutting for me and don't drop the iron and make it set fire stuff. My iron cut on fire the other day. Yeah, Liz's iron cord <laughs> decided to explode at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night. Because was tired. tired. And then, you know, <laughs> drama. Um, good at drama. So you can... You'll notice on the bag Liz showed you, here I have another one that doesn't have cork at the bottom and has fabric. Um, I quilted these, just grit, just cross hatching. Um, you can totally quilt the bags. It does make for a really nice heavier texture. Um, it's not necessary. What we're going to use today instead of quilting the bags, I'm just going to put some fusible fleece on the back of this exterior Essex linen because... Um, I really it like stabilizes it a thing. little bit, but it's it, still going to be a soft It keeps it from bag. being a really flimsy bag. I mean, because sometimes it's nice to have a How really soft tote this? bag. 18 wide, 17 and a half tall. 18 wide. 17. It seems like That's it's going to be huge, but it's really not because we're going to box you it. box it and then it gets smaller. So it gets shorter and um, thinner. So, okay. got a little bit of extra... And um, I was looking, I was hoping to find a really good tutorial online for one of these, the way I make them. And I couldn't find one to direct you guys to. So I'll write down my instructions. Um, it's really hard when like you have a way you like to do it and everybody else does it just, just a little differently. Which is fine. Which is fine. Everybody can do it however they like. No big deal. But... Um, it just means I couldn't put a link to a tutorial 
on the video for you. So you're gonna have to deal with what we come up with. All right, so these are our two exterior panels. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we need now is the fusible fleece to be about half an inch smaller. So I would say 17 and a half by 17. Um, it can be just a little bit bigger than that so it gets caught in the seam, but I don't want the full size. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. You don't want all of that bulk in all of the seams. In all the seams, yep. So you guys, this is my pattern. It's really fancy. So on one piece of paper. I have to write down what we're cutting so I don't have to do the math over and over again in my head. Because it's still morning. And my brain's still a little tired. All right. Ta-da! All right. Next thing to cut is our cork. Now, guys, cork definitely has a grain to it. You can do um, that. Depends on which way you want it, it to go. It's up to you whether you care if it goes horizontal or vertical. I like vertical. Mm -hmm. going up the side of my bag. So for me, I'm going to lay it down this way. And I'm going to say I want it to be 18 inches wide by 16 inches tall. She's boxing. I am. That's okay. Well, really, she's the one standing in front of the cutting mat. Yeah. I have the sewing machine, so. Haha. <laughs> I'll cut, she sews. Right. And, uh, yeah, and see, look at that big scrap. Where that, that's this? like two this. bags worth. Holy cow. Okay. 16 tall? That's what you said to me? Yeah, I did. Just checking. I did. So double check tall. my measurements. Eight. Eight. So, you guys, when I have to cut on a mat like this, because I don't have rulers this, well, I do, but... I don't have rulers this size. You're going to bring your 18 inch square to um, I really like, oh, you'll Line notice I come in an inch all the way around. That way I can for sure see all my numbers. Right. Everywhere Just make sure on both sides of the line. You so think I'm doing like, my math right. Instead of 16, she's I'm cutting down 17. 17. You just have to pay attention to that math. But, uh, I find it easier than trying to put it all the way in the corner because then I can't always see the, the line. Depending on the brand of math. Matt, you can't always see the numbers all, all right, the way around. and out of the center there, you can leave it for, by center. Good lining. night, Jen. She said the lining. lining. Actually, I'll have you cut the lining while I'm sewing. Okay. Grab the pressing mat. I am bossy today. Okay. Because before I can sew any of this, we, we have need to fuse, to fuse the, fleece. the fleece to our exterior fabric. Yep. So, wrong side up. Go You're through. wondering which side to fuse. It's the, the rough sticky side. One. The one that does not feel pleasant. So this is going to come in about a quarter of an inch ish. All the way around. All the way around. Ish. Ish. Gigantic ish is right there. <laughs> so this Saturday I have my next placemats class because I teach a class where we make placemats so that the following week we can bind them all since that's the solution I've come up with when people have asked me to teach binding classes. Um, mm -hmm. And several of the gals in my last placemat class have taken like my 101 class and other skill builder classes where we're very exact. And um, we did a lot of ish sewing with the placemats because that's what it is. It's quilt as you go with a jelly roll. You ish. just let it go. It's a lot of ish cutting and sewing. And um, it really threw them. <laughs> They're like, Jen, <laughs> we can't do this. This isn't how you work. I'm like, well, for this it is how I work. You're like, in this case, though, it really is all about issue. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we're really exact and precise, and that's awesome. And other times, we're not. I'm ironing on the, the linen side because it's easier to move the iron. Yep. You can't iron on the fleece side. I just prefer not. Right. Iron. You'll notice she got it. Kind of stuck on. So it stayed. And then it's like, here's the real ironing. I can move the iron easier this way. It's right. just preference. There's no real rules. No. It's all about our preferences. <clears throat> so, yeah, in case you wondered why I flipped it over, that's, that's why. Right. <clears throat> so, all right. So I'm going to trade and give Liz that. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to decide this is the left side of it. I'm just going to line these two up and sew them together. I'm going to use, you can pin cork, 
I'm just going to use some Wonder Clips right here. Cork, though, you guys, it is kind of like the vinyl. It's where you're not you going to necessarily repair the holes. Right. You're not going to be able to go through the weave because guess what? There isn't a weave. Um, I mean, there kind of is, but on the back. Way through it. Yeah. So I'm just going to use some Wonder Clips. Um, I still have my walking foot on this machine from last week, which is great. Now, is it necessary? No. No. Is it helpful? Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Anytime you're working with thicker, heavier materials, a walking foot is helpful. It just, it just is. Well, it's like binding. If I'm binding something small, it's not as big of a deal. If I've got a puffy quilt with minky, oh, I want my walking foot. Right. I can feed a quilt through without it. But Although I have made jelly roll rugs without one. So, you know, that all sorts sounds, of things are possible. That sounds miserable. My best jelly roll rug was made without a walking foot. Really? Yep. But uh, probably because I was being super duper cautious because I didn't have a walking foot. All right. So this is part of our panel here. Now I am going to, before I add that other piece, top stitch, top stitch this down. And that's to make it lay nice. It's just going to make it lay flatter. If you've done apparel, you understand top stitching. And so I'm not pressing not or anything. Designer. I'm just going to tug this over. We're just going to top stitch it down so and that it go. stays nice. Yeah. Here's the other side of our bag. It's going to be awesome. I love this quarter trail. It is the prettiest because I love the linens. You guys, I love the texture and the depth that you get working with linen. And it's soft. And it's pretty, and it's just, I really like it. I put it on the back of quilts. It washes up so soft. So soft. It's yeah, awesome. Alive. And then, so when they uh, release Quarry Trail, it's a linen with a print. And, you know, that just has to make me happy. Plus, they're comb flowers. I mean, really. Right. Seriously, making me happy right there. You so. used a common term for a flower. I did. Well, that's because if I called it echinacea, people would look at me like I was talking about vitamins or something. <laughs> I was like, you used a common term. All right, so this is half of our bag, or a little over half. So what I want to do is make, make sure, sure that directional. my stems are still going down, because the other side is going to be going up. You know. Yeah. Here's your clips. Thank you. Bags are not that hard, you guys. No. These kind of bags are not that hard. No. This Mom's is doing her Poppins bag class again today, and those I'm not interested in, because that's too much work for me. But those, those are a little trickier, but these kind of tote bags, but they're and, fun. and what I love about like what we're doing here today is this is a very basic tote bag. Mm -hmm. That being said, we're dressing it up. Yeah. And you guys, this is the kind of bag that is like grocery bag. Right. I mean, reusable bags are all the rage, and which I totally get because I'm all about reusable bags, although I suck at carrying them around because I should. But... Yeah, I love big bags like this because I can take all the snacks to the soccer game and all the everything without having to... Well, like today, okay, so we stopped at the quilt shop on our way here because luckily the quilt shop's a mile and a half from mom's house on our way from Nampa to Meridian. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, I like had the materials all in my hand Mm -hmm. Then I was like, wait a minute, this is stupid, because we're bringing four bags with us. <laughs> it's like, we have bags. We Let's have bags. In, right? Bags. I hey. love having bags. And then we're top stitching the other side. Nothing fancy. But it's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be so pretty when it's done. What place do you want me to cut for this other bag? Oh. Why don't you cut it like eight by ten? Like, seriously, there's room for two out of that. How about nine by ten? Perfect. Because that uses, like, the whole thing. Might as well. You we'll make two. Okay. I only have one zipper. All right. I'll send you home with the fabric to make another one. <laughs> what, you're going to keep this one? Yes. <laughs> she picked up on that. Did you hear that? She figured out I, that I meant this one's I'm, mine. I, I've met her. And you can take home the other stuff. 
is you. Oh, you know what I just realized though? What? We're using, well, I don't know why I'm trying to use those to cut fabric. I don't um, know. We'll have to see how the gray thread blends with the pink zipper. Oh. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. And the gray is beautiful. Gray's blendy. And if it doesn't work, it's yours. <laughs> Sorry. She's did honor. I say that out loud? Yeah, she did. Did. Okay. So here's our exterior. Really fancy. This is going to be an awesome bag. Okay. All we're going to do now is fold it in half. Okay. Now, I am not as worried about matching the top ends here as I am about matching that seam this right seam there right there. The if this doesn't match, it's going to scream at you. I'm going to put that over there. You make the rest of it work. This is the one yep. that matters. Where are our pins, We're though? We're showing up blurry. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Oh, our pins? Let me grab her. I'm like, I'm going to use Wonder Clips right here, but... This spot right here, I want to pin so it doesn't I like. I honestly have no idea, Deborah. Budge at all. Sorry. I know last week it kept trying to like zoom in and out. It was like auto focusing several times. Sorry. Hopefully it'll be less blurry on the replay. replay. Replay will probably be better. Okay, so while she pins this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about strapping and handles. So there's a lot of different options we have in the world when it comes to handles for bags. Tons. You can buy fancy leather handles like this mm -hmm. and sew them down. Or you can... That was fancy. I know. She just kicked them at me. Um, make coordinating fabric handles like this. But if it's just fabric by itself, it can be pretty flimsy. Yep. So for so, those, I covered... Um, what she did was cover what we call strapping or webbing. Mm -hmm. And it's this. It's that heavy woven stuff that you have on now and you have to be careful so what i used okay. for those right here mm -hmm. um is a polyester strapping that we got which is nice and all but if your iron's at a cotton setting you might melt it it might get a little melty so this be is cotton careful. strapping yeah our one and a half inch wide strapping which i really like it's nice and heavy is 100 percent cotton so press away at it it's gonna um, so be fine. we're going to make the type today where we cover our cotton strapping. You can use strapping by itself, you guys, if you can get the right color. We only carry a few colors right now. But like for this bag right here, I could totally just the black that would black be fine alone. because it totally works with Actually, the comb do flowers. do you have enough to cover that with the comb flower? Hmm. No? Darn it. Because that's only 18 inches and you wanted 24. Yeah, I kind of forgot my fabric for the strapping. See? Just so a little we, short. Otherwise, we, yes, we will. We rated mom's stash. That's okay. All good. Okay, what do you want me to cut for the lining? Uh, I want the lining to be 18 by 40. If you leave it folded on the fold there, Fine. then you can make it 18 gotta by 20. i got to cut the selvage. Yes, no selvage. If you've ever been in any of our classes, the answer is selvage is not fabric. It's not part of the fabric. It's, it's not part of the fabric. Don't, don't try and use that extra quarter of an inch or half of an inch. You'll be sad. It's not it, worth it. Don't do it. It doesn't shrink the same way as the rest of the fabric because it's not woven. It doesn't woven stretch the same. the same way as the rest of the fabric. Nope. It doesn't any of those things. Not at all. So we cut it off. Just get rid of it. Pretend it's not there. The purpose of the selvage is to help feed the fabric through the mill. The mill. That's it. That's why it's woven the way it is. Your regular oh. cotton fabric wouldn't hold up to that. From the fold. Yeah, it would make sense. Oh, good night. I'm on top of things, you guys. I really don't want to have to sew the single piece of fabric together. That's what killed me. Do you know how many lining video, how many bag videos I watched? And they're like, here's two pieces of lining. Let's sew them together. Like, You're like, the same why? Fabric. why? Why did you cut it in half? And it's because they want to open out of the bottom. And 20, I'm like, right? You said yeah. 20 by... And I'm like, 20 by 20. I'm sorry, it keeps pausing. 20, 20 by, by 18. All right, sorry. You're on the fold. Yes. Make it 18 wide and 40 this way. Yeah. See, so I'm on it. Um. You might notice I didn't bother like back stitching here at the beginning because we're gonna box because it. Because I'm gonna cut that corner right off anyway. 
And if you're um, unfamiliar with what box corners are, we'll talk about it in a minute. Stay tuned. Your video keeps pausing. I don't. Ooh, it is getting pixely. Yeah, it's being buffery. I'm no, sorry, I'm you guys. Gonna, I'm going to connect to mom's Wi-Fi real quick. We usually don't. Because we usually get I get a better connection through um, my internet, my service provider. But anyway, we'll see if that helps. I'm really sorry if we're having video issues today. Appreciate that. Okay, here's your lining. Strapping. Do we want to go with the strapping? Let's not. We're not going to. Now, here's a fun option for the lining, though. Ooh, you can totally make out a pocket. We're gonna make a pocket out of this. Oh, hurry and do it. Hurry and do See? it. I'll do it just, just like that. Under. Right. So press it real quick. I'll get my ironing station back up on the table. Right. See, we're on the fly. We can do this. Right? So what we are going to do is make this lined pocket, you guys. It's magic. It's not magic. It's Basically, really you put a piece of fabric, fold it in half, right sides together. Shit. I pressed it the wrong way. Oh. I did it wrong sides together. That's okay. We want it right. Oh, wow. My... Lovely. There we go. All right. And I'm okay. just going to leave an opening to turn it right side out here in a minute. Because, you know, we have to have leader enders for some reason. It's necessary. Do you want to pin those sides together for me? And the beautiful thing about this linen where it's not printed, there is no right side. No right side. Guys, the weaves are... The weave. The weave is slightly different from side to side, but it's really... It's up to you which side you want to use. It's really not Quite often you can't tell the difference. Mostly I can't tell the difference. The only time I can really see it on the Essex linens is when I'm using the homespun. Uh, yeah. But other than that, not really. I think we need to oil this machine. We do. It's getting there. It's getting a little rattled. Well, you know, we're supposed to oil it every time. All right, we're gonna leave a little hole so I can turn that pocket right side out, or rather so that Liz can turn that pocket right side out. That's how that goes. We all have our jobs. And go. Okay. Bag. No spiders. That's a girl. She just likes to irritate you. It's kind of funny. We love you. Okay, so she left me a little hole. It's essentially making a little pillow pocket. All right, turn it right side out, press. And then we'll sew the pocket sew down to the, the lining. cover on the scissors so I have a blunt end to shove it in there. Right, because we don't have a turning tool with us. I didn't bring one. Um, well, we didn't really plan to make a pocket. Okay, so this is my tote bag put together. Our next step on it, other than working on the lining here, is going to be to box corners. And so while I sew the lining, I'm going to have Liz explain to you how that's going to work. How big do you want me we're to box gonna... them? Only two inches? Two and a half. I brought a two and a half inch square. Okay. Um, and we're going to box both the lining and the exterior fabric. So I turn this right side out and you'll notice here's the opening. I'm going to go ahead and fold in that seam allowance. Fold it in, press it, and press it. And then when that gets stitched down into the pocket, it will close up mm -hmm. that opening. And actually, you know how I had just had her pin this? I'm going to unpin it so I can sew a pocket on. Rude. I know, right? I'm wasting your work. Yes, I'm not going to unpin all of it. Just okay. of it. 
because you know bags should have pockets especially That's always helpful especially in the era of having a smartphone with me all the time i need somewhere to put that besides the bottom of the bag Okay, so I'm just so, going to place it in here, about center, down about two inches. You guys, box corners, what do they do? They give us our, the base of our bag. So it has this bottom. Actually, all three of those bags, one is a two inch box, one is a two and a half, that one's a three. This is a bigger box. So it's all a matter of getting it, Personal having that preference. base right there, and it gives that bag. That. So I made, I made all three of those different sizes. But this is what we mean by box in the corner. And it's really tricky, you guys, it's not tricky at all. It, take, it is a little scary to cut. It's slightly frightening. I'm going to take this. Do you want me in from the seam? Yeah. So okay. you always measure in from the seam. The seam doesn't. Because there is no seam. There, There's no seam here. It's just a fold. And so the way I'm going to get a perfect square is to come in. So we're going to pretend here. that the edge of the fabric is actually it's where I set it up accidentally. Okay. And this is scary. Just watch. Gonna be fine. I'm gonna cut a hole in the bottom of her back. Right. Now cut carefully. You don't want to. I don't want to go over. So jab up in here. A lot of times I get close and I finish the scissors. I have my scissors to get that little last exactly tiny bit. What she's doing? Because well, it's better than going into the bottom of the bag. That would this be is sad. pork and that's irreparable. Right. So we won't do that. So if you're doing this with any other ruler. Um, you can go ahead and mark them. You can use your pen. Sometimes I draw it with a pen and I cut it with scissors. If you're trying to be super duper precise. Mm -hmm. I've got a super sharp blade on this rotary cutter. Well, because we got it out of the package this morning on my way here. So, and I'm going to finish that little corner with scissors. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, there is a seam allowance there. So, you know, a sixteenth of an inch isn't the world. Right. You just deal. So, what I did is I just cut boxes out of the base of this bag. Which right. looks terrifying. <laughs> right. But to box a corner, what we do is then we open it up like this. And this opening all of a sudden does. And you have to be careful because the cork will kind of pull at your seam a little cord. bit. So, and then we, we piece it together like this. I'm going to go ahead and open this up because that is. Thick. Do you want to open or? I would open. I don't know. Well, I don't know. See no, it's not. Can... We're going to press it to the side. Mm -hmm. I changed my mind because it it seems to really want to go that way, and when it wants to go that way, right. I, I tend to let fabric go yeah, where we, it wants we, to. Yeah, we we press which way it wants to go because it it'll always end up nicer that way. And it's pretty easy to find the center. You can mark the center if you want to, uh, but based on where my boxes are, it pretty much found it all by itself. Mm -hmm. Especially because the cork is kind of stiff. That just. It does. That's what Actually, it does. the stiffness of the cork makes using it to make a bag really nice because it stays. Now, you can box your lining, which we will do, and we will today, but uh, just an FYI, you don't really have to. You don't always have to. Um, it just it makes the inside of the bag cleaner. If you have a big box, it is helpful. Right. Like if you're doing a three inch box or something, you'll have less extra fabric there mm -hmm. on the inside. See, so what this is going to do is it's going to make our tote bag, this is going to be a big tote. It's going to be monstrous. Nice. And um, it's going to have a base to it. Jen can put her baguettes in here or something. Right. I haven't made baguettes in a long time. What do you want me to do with this? Uh. Can the zipper do it? It's on the floor. Just on my zipper. Another lacy zipper because they're cute. We have a thousand of them on their way to the shop, so. An order may have accidentally been submitted three times. Three times. But that's okay. It's okay. Because they're lace zippers. They're, they're lace awesome. zippers and they're cute. And they're three bucks. So <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> Can't beat that. Nope. Not at all. So in this case, I am going to use a couple pins because you're not going to see the holes in the cork and then it can actually be usable for Jen. Mm -hmm. And when I made mine, I pinned that part. So I'm just going to pin it right up to the edge of the cork. Mm -hmm. Cake walk. Okay. Now when I'm sewing this lining together, I am going to leave a 
about a five, six inch gap on the side here because I gotta turn this bag right side out. And since my lining is one single piece, there, there isn't a hole in the bottom. Mm -hmm. That would be a reason to uh, have your, make your lining in two pieces. You leave the hole in the bottom and then close it up later. But, but to me, uh, that's an extra seam. So we're not gonna do that. Leave a hole on the side, which I can still close up later. Liz and I are not very good about following other people's directions. No. But we make our own. We make our own really well. But then sometimes we have trouble explaining our own. So I well, when people say, why do you do it like that? I don't know. I felt like it. It made sense in my brain. Right. And that's what it comes down to for us for the most part. It's how it made sense in my brain for it to work. All right. We're getting blurry again. I don't know what's going on today. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. You guys. We'll okay. hopefully have a better replay for you. Right. Hopefully that's just the live. And when I post the actual video on YouTube, it'll be clean. All right, I'll sew this down while you box corners. Oh yeah. There's this too. Oh yeah. We've got all kinds of things to sew. That's okay. We're good. We're gonna make all kinds of things today. Totally winging it, but you know, whatever. to the other side right since I'd like to kind of make it not crazy bulky at the base of the what? bag just for fun it is kind of nice not to do that alrighty almost there and then we're to the assembly out. part of the bag, and of course my bob is right there. And we're like done. It's amazing. Especially <laughs> since we're not going to... It only took a few videos, but our bobbin ran out. Oh, well, it happens. <laughs> Such is life, right guys? See, guys, look how cute. It's being so cute. What? Wow, that doesn't want to spin, does it? Should lock it up? Oh, well. I'll worry about fixing the machine later. Right now, I'm just gonna put some thread on the bottom. Yeah, it doesn't actually hurt. I'm gonna do the other side to go up and down. Yeah. So what you're gonna do is pin it in place there. Yeah, and then unzip it. And then unzip it. Because you can't sew it like this, you guys. I know that sounds crazy. I, I mean, I'm good, but uh, this machine doesn't have a free arm, so it's actually not possible. Right. Alright, that's enough thread for today. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to wind it all. We're good. We're good. We're great. We're on it. <laughs> Thanks for tolerating us. I really do appreciate it. Oh, okay. Now that I've got it in place, I'm going to undo the zipper so I can actually get my pins in well. In nicely. But I have the beginning and the end pretty much where I want them. I can pull the zipper all the way off here, you guys, because we haven't cut it off yet. But for heaven's sakes, don't cut it off with the pull all the way over. Please don't. It's fixable, but it's but not it's, fun. It's not it fun. It takes time. Just, yeah. Just don't do just it. Just don't. It's just easier if you don't. Mm -hmm. So, let's not. Anyway, we'll let her rethread the machine and then I'll make her do a whole bunch more sewing. Maybe a whole, like, Stack of sewing over there. Today. I know. It's kind of fun for me to actually be ahead. It doesn't happen very often. All right. Okay. Back in business. Back at it. Which one do you want? Lining? Sure. Lining. And then uh, but base of the bag. That's the word I was going for. Words. Words. Words are hard. They are. Especially when you're challenged like I am. Here, you want this one? 
Yeah, I do. So she is back stitching here. Did you guys see that? Um, the reason I'm pointing that out is that this is the base of the bag. This is a seam that is going to gradually get pulled at. And so it's always good to backstitch in that situation. That's what it is for. Right. All right. Cut this off. Our job is to show people they can chain piece in any situation. Right? <laughs> I know it seems like it's like working crazy, but you got to understand that to my brain, it's efficient. Um, and almost it's anything else is painful. It, it, it definitely is a compulsion. Yeah. So, but it's not one that impacts the quality of my life. So it's um, not a disorder. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's just a quirk. It's a quirk. Yes. Quirky. I'm we're good at quirky. We're good at quirky. Okay. Not so, so much intentionally, but because you just are. <laughs> Okay, because this cork sews beautifully. It really does. It goes really smoothly through the machine. Hit that seam one more time. So, yeah, you'll notice you went over the seam twice, too. Just because the cork is thick, it makes sure we've got things stitched down really good. Right. Here we go. I'll trim that. Thank you. Okay. So, after I sew her zipper down, there's also a leader ender project. Oh, wait. Um, what we need to do is put these together oh, with the to... handles. Now, for so that there's to still work, a hole in the lining, you guys, because we're not that's the done. last step. Very last step. It's right there. So we have our lining, you guys. It's right here. There's our cute pocket, and we're gonna go ahead and leave it like this. We're gonna put it down in the back. No. So yeah. Gonna, yes. You're gonna put it down. We're in gonna the leave back. that wrong right side out. Okay. Brain function, please. Okay, and our two strapping pieces, we cut these at 24 inches. Right, just so you know. That way it's a good size handle to. It'll fit over your shoulder. Really I like my wide. tote bags to fit over my shoulder. Okay, so what we want to do right now is sew right sides this to right sides. Than that. It is. See, I'm not doing it. My gosh. You must have cut like, that big. My bag's huge. Okay, how tall is that? 16 inches. Oh, I was going to say, you got that bag enormous. It's way too big. Okay. So trim I'm it down. trimming it down because I think it's crazy. It, it is big. This is what happens when Jen wings it. It's at 22. <laughs> Boy, that is a big bag. See, I was like, that's crazy, Pete. Why is it so tall? Because she's Jen. Because I'm winging it <laughs> this morning. Oh, you guys. It's a good thing people like us, because otherwise it'd be like, crazy. Oh my gosh, what is wrong? That's see, more this reasonable. is a better size. That's a better like, bag. Why is it so deep. Okay, so what we're gonna do is turn the right the lining the lining right side out and put it into our tote put bag. Put it in so we have so right sides facing. Our, our seams are gonna match up and go backward, like opposite. press opposite directions. Nest words. Okay, but before we go any further, I have to put the handles on. Now, handle placement, where do we put it? What I'm going to do is take a little ruler here and a little pen here, and I'm going to measure in three inches from my seam and draw a little line. And we'll just mark that all the way around. Yep, three inches on all, all of them. That's three and a half. This is three, right there. Um, because I'm going to line the edge of my handle up with that little hash mark. That and way, the thing is, it could be two inches, it could be four inches, it's all a matter of where you want it, but consistency and having them all pretty much the same right. is really helpful. The thing is, you don't want it to be four inches here, and two inches here, and three inches here, and yes, yeah. that's no bueno. Not good. So just keep it consistent. Jen likes hers at about three inches then. On the, the bright side, size. lately, I've made a lot of bags. So, I do have an opinion. <laughs> okay. So, also, you don't want your handle doing this twisty thing. No. Okay? So, we're going to pay attention. We are. 
Okay. Jen, do handles go inside or outside? They go between the lining and the bag. No, they don't. Yes, they do. If you put them here, they'll be inside the bag forever. That's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it like this. So I've got a U. Hit it. We go right here. Oh, yeah. Between the so, lining and the bag. Okay. Hold that right there so we don't move it. So we we'll scoot pinned, it over so that we'll the outside is right there. Pin the lining to it. And I can just even put a clip there. And then bring my lining up on that side okay. and pin away. We'll do the same thing over here. Make sure they're right. Mm -hmm. About where we want. Yep. And once we have that placed, we can then we can pin around the top. And we're going to sew all the way around the top. And we'll turn it inside out and top stitch. Right. Right. Like you do. Like you do. Hey, look at all these leader ender pieces I have sitting around. Okay. Pinch it up a little bit. Okay. And if there is a little bit of fullness, you just ease that in. You work it in. It's a lining. It's a lining. Um, but that's why I like to work my way in from the sides. Um, even doing like a pin every four inches and then adjust because that allows me the space to work that in so that I don't have all my fullness in on the side right by the seam or something. Paula, I'm not understanding your question. Wrap handles all around bag oh you mean from like this side to that side oh, like one big handle one big handle like that um it would be similar uh you'd be putting them in here and here yeah and your lining would be like tucked up under it a little bit um though generally that handle would be almost the length of the bag or the height of the bag so sorry if that's not what you meant paul let us know we'll try and answer do, 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 do. Hey, look, I made a bag. Yep. Now, if you're going to make this little boxy bag, the next thing you have to do is find the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then you line that up with the zipper. And sew the side together. Is the zipper? Okay, it's not the other end. It's not the other end yet. Okay, yeah, so you would be tucking your handle from here to here and it would go underneath the lining. Another option would be to attach the lining and uh, then do your handles on the inside separate. and have it be slightly exposed. Well, there's a, there's another option too, um, but it's hard to do. When we're doing the handles, you guys, at this point, I will backstitch over the handles. Oh, I, I will too. Yep. Because that is where this bag is going to get pulled at. That's where the pressure is going to come and that's where the wear is going to happen. Right. Proof the zipper in. I am. So now that I've gotten this far, I'm the zipper, zipper has to go in. Wait, I still have to find the bottom of this side. Just gotta find it, and then. But before she can sew, so we don't want to have our. I don't want to. I don't want to not have a pull in this bag. Plus, if the zipper's not open, we can't make, turn it right side out. Right, it does make it tricky. <laughs> it does make it tricky. You can pin this. You can do stuff. I'm just gonna wing it. Use my fingers. And then while she. After she does that, and she'll sew this together, I'll box the corners of this guy. Right, and I would do a one inch box. Yep, we'll do a little one. Okay, right. trade. Trade that. Okay, so for starters, I'm gonna cut my little extra off right here. Yeah. Right, because I don't need that extra zipper. Right? Nope. My trash pile is not hitting the trash. Pile. Whoops. Hey, I made us a scrap hole. I just haven't gotten it glazed bring yet. It here. Well, I haven't gotten it glazed yet. Fine, let's do it. Be that way. But I made okay. a scrap. So same thing, guys. A one-inch box. I'm going right here inside the seam and on the fold. Right. So it looks like a rectangle. It's not. Right. It's gonna look wrong because part of it's seamed, part of it's not. I'm gonna do this. Yes. Yeah, little ones like that. I like to do the scissors. 
little closer than I wanted to with that rotary cutter right there. Mm -hmm. And I have good scissors, so I'm going to use them. Get my little pen. We're going to box these corners the exact same way. We've done little box bag videos before, though, so I think you guys have seen this. If you haven't, you should check them out. If not, you can watch this one, too, though, because it's kind of the thing. Right. Now, this cork doesn't really need a lining, you guys. No. Because it's got this awesome weave on the, the side of it. On the back. So this is actually a really easy box of bag because there's no need to quilt it or mine it, right? Which is why it makes great wallets and purses and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I am going to open these seams right here. It's a nice option instead of using like leather, mm -hmm. you know. I am opening this because it's a small bag and we'll just uh, double stitch over the right. um, hold it down where the open seam is. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be adorable. But yeah, guys, when I'm working with this kind of material, Wonder Clips, way to go. Seriously. They are. They're such a good, like, standard They're tool. They're a versatile tool that I use for more than binding, although I use them a lot for binding, clearly, right. as you guys know. But... They definitely do more than mine. Oh yeah. And then this is going to be totally adorable in just a minute. It'll be done. Right, it'll be done. Once those corners are boxed, except we didn't put tabs on it, but that's okay. Yeah, no tabs on this one. We're being in a hurry. So we do. Right, I'm almost done. And then what we'll do is we'll top stitch around. Yeah. I'll turn it right side out and I will pin the um, opening yeah. so we can top stitch that. Once again, with the openings on a bag like this, you guys, you can hand stitch and whip stitch it closed right. on the lining if you want your seams to be invisible, which Jen and I completely understand because we are We're normally that way. That anal. Um, for the inside of a tote bag like this, I don't care not nope. to do that. I'm not going to for this, but uh, if you've ever been to like one of my cutie cube classes or something, you'll have seen me. Do that by hand. I sew down Wait, the. This um, is why we have a hole because otherwise we have a this. really lame bag. And you guys, I also like to uh, back stitch around this opening right here. Oh, because we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna pull out it, heck especially at it. to get the cork out. You're gonna pull hard. Um, so it will undo that seam or at least pop several stitches. Right. If yeah, see, I just did. Pop. Um, no big deal. We'll sew it again. We're gonna sew it again. But so I would recommend backstitching, definitely. where you're leaving that opening, because mm -hmm. even with a backstitch, chances are we're gonna pull a stitch or two. Because yeah, that's a lot to get through there. And leave it big enough that you can do this. Right. Don't. Uh, that's an error I see a lot where people they don't want a big opening, so you, they'll leave it at like two or three inches. This bag is too big. So this is our box lining. You can see how it was boxed. Get the Which base means of the bag. it'll sit nicely in the bottom of the bag. Ooh. See, and look at how perfect I love, that is. I love, I love how boxed those corners get because of the cork. The cork's awesome. We love the cork. Okay. So, first off, bringing my iron back up here, right, because it's not optional. That got all wrinkled. I don't know if you guys <laughs> noticed how I was shoving, <laughs> but holy crap. Right. So, if I'm going to top stitch this down and make it nice and fairly pretty, right, Right. I'm going to go We're ahead gonna press it. and press that so that we can make it look nice again. <laughs> So, we got this. Totally. Yeah, see, I talked about seven stitches or so, turning that right side out. Right, and I didn't make that whole small. Yeah. 
So just as a note, leave yourself an opening, you guys. It's not worth it to, to not. Right? Okay. You would you will like be... a box of eggs? Uh, sure. Would you like to stitch that? I would love to. I'll turn this one right side out. This one will not be anywhere near as dangerous. <laughs> That'll be slightly simpler. We didn't put tabs on this one or anything. It's just the most basic box of bag you can do. Right. No quilting, no tabs. Just as it And I don't really need a tool to press these corners out because they just want to pop out. Right. Which is super duperly awesome. is finished now I can tuck it inside my tote bag and there's a little boxy bag out of our scraps mm -hmm. as a leader and ender because you know it's how we are it's how we roll okay so I have two options here for you you could I have a bag over there that I did this on this one leave this lining a little taller if you if your lining's long enough which this one is and sew around and it this. kind of ends up looking like a binding a binding now i'm not going to here i'm gonna go ahead and flip Hold it all the way up but it is a fun option especially it's harder to do when you have the uh, straps like this because you're gonna have to fold the strap back on itself totally doable though but if you're um, doing attached straps if you're doing attached straps like that it's it's a cute easy option even so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this do over, press it? ideally we press it, and then I'm just going to top stitch around a quarter of an inch away from the top. I could do an eighth, but you could double top stitch this too. double top stitch, we're we'll blurry you. again. I'm oh, sorry. Good night, that handle came out. Oh, didn't go in deep enough. That's okay, it's fixable. So what we'll do is we'll, so here's the thing, our handle got pulled out a bit. That's no bueno. So what we can do right here is undo a couple stitches, yes. pull out a few stitches, and put it back down in. Right. And it'll get held in by my seam allowance. Come on. It's 10.30. Oh, God. Sorry, Sorry guys. guys. We're taking forever. We will fix this. Yeah, we actually and had a meeting. Just we, plan. To we got to top stitch it down, and I'll post pictures of it later today. All done and cute. How's right. that? We'll do that. And hopefully without a blurry video. Right. But... Thanks for Sorry joining us. That. Thanks Sorry. for joining us. We have a tote bag and it's adorable. It's adorable. And we'll see you guys next, next week. A uh, new theme. We'll let you know what it is. Okay. Bye. See you later.